We're joined now by the co-chairs of the Cultural Heritage Task Force, Susan Gillespie and Terry Majewski. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you, Terry. Thank you for inviting us. So let's talk about the task force and what you've been tasked with doing. Well, the task force was created by the executive board, by President Leif Mullings last year because the association was being contacted by a number of organizations or even individuals asking for our advocacy in helping uh, issues where cultural heritage was being threatened, most particularly in the um, selling of antiquities on the world's art markets. That was one issue. The other issue was the threat to um, cultural heritage in conflict zones, such as in Mali, um, and now in Syria, and also in Iraq. And so the idea was rather than having the association respond or react to these threats to cultural heritage brought to them by outsiders, that they would take a more proactive stance in dealing with all the multifaceted issues of cultural heritage. Why is this important to make sure that these items are, are protected? Well, heritage can mean many things. There can be tangible heritage, which is what most people think about artifacts, things that you find in museums. Um, it can also be something a little bit bigger, like whole cultural heritage landscapes that are important to people's uh, past and future and present livelihoods. Um, and then you have intangible heritage, which, which could be something like folklore. Uh, uh, but it's the general belief is that heritage is important because it's our common world heritage. So uh, a person's or an ethnic group's particular heritage is part of the world, the global picture of heritage that all of us should care about. And that really preserving heritage can lead to peace and harmony. And that's what underlies so many of these international conventions and um, and ideas and, and, organ and non-governmental organizations that promote heritage. Tell us about the roundtable discussion that you guys are hosting this weekend and, and where people can go to, to join the discussion. The roundtable will be Sunday morning uh, at starting at 8 o'clock in the Marriott Ballroom Salon 2. And what we have done is assembled a blue ribbon panel of experts speaking to all the different facets of cultural heritage that Terry was talking about. And what we have asked them to do is to tell us what the association should be doing. So we actually want to hear some constructive criticism mm -hmm. uh, and some paths forward. This is the things you should be doing and we will fold that into our recommendations to the executive board. That's great, getting more voices and opinions heard. Mm -hmm. And we, we created a white paper uh, with them for them to focus on. So they'll, uh, there's specific areas they were asked to speak on. So for example, we have uh, someone speaking on museums, someone on archeology, span mm -hmm. Uh, someone on ethnography, uh, endangered languages, the National Park Service, intangible heritage, and uh, intellectual property rights. <clears throat> and so they'll speak for a few minutes on their particular uh, involvement in that topic area. And then they'll answer the questions because uh, it's really about mm -hmm. broader ideas. And this is, uh, even though many of our other task force activities are ongoing, and we provided them with preliminary results, so the speakers mm -hmm. know what we're up to, and uh, because when it's what a two-year time frame, but it really doesn't. It seems like a long time until you're in the yeah, middle of it. Yeah, until you're in the middle of it. But and then we also will have, and we've invited people to to be in the audience. We really want an open discussion with other people in the audience, other experts, bringing their voices to to the dialogue. Nice. Well, I hope you have a huge turnout. Hopefully, lots of opinions and feedback. Ladies, yeah. thanks for stopping by. And well, thank you so much. Good luck. Thanks for including us.